Director's regular board meeting agenda for Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. And I call this meeting to order and please stand for the pledge I've asked our purchasing manager, Mike Hayward, to lead us.
recommend we go with full color. It'll, it'll help with uh, the message and, and how clear it will be. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions after the public comment. Are there any emails or questions from the public? No emails are received. No one else is speaking, so I'm assuming we'll go on with uh, the board. Is there any questions or comments from the board? Director Graham. Yeah. 
when you come to the bottom of the current address, that yeah, our, I would think of that ballpark. Yeah. And my, yeah. it just proportionally is going to go however wide it is. Okay. Chances are uh, you're going to go less than half again the height, so it would be less than half again the width, which would still be probably a little bit less than the width of the monitor. So uh, it's not going to be too big. But we don't want to be too close to the bottom either. Bottom side is now, so we say we're so three feet. You see over on the side that the so ACWD is, is two feet? Yeah, I mean that's half again bigger. Okay. Going from two foot high to three foot high in that ballpark. Just making the high desert water district name logo larger, probably in the three foot high range would be my suggestion. Okay? Okay. Any other comments? Amen. And then we could get a final price and approval when we approve the actual. Right. So sure. the price would be less the stone. Uh, and that's that number? Yes. That, the number that, that you see on his quote just just to get up the stone work, and that's what the price would be. And would you like us, would you prefer us to go ahead and approve the, the dollar amount now? And then we can finalize the design at night meeting. No, we don't want to do that. In case there's when we redesign that there could be a change in the price. So more better to get the new design with the new price. Right. Change the design and bring it back to the board. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. okay, sure. Let's go on then to 4D. And this is the wastewater sample testing. The staff is recommending that the board of directors authorize the general manager. Uh, to accept a bid for uh, West water, wastewater sample testing from Gat Pipe Laboratory Inc. in the amount of $260,268 uh, and it's a three year agreement in presenting this is Mike Hayward, purchasing manager. So part of item 4D is for uh, sampling of the wastewater plant. Uh, this item was also put out for advertised sealed bid and also sent to known labs in the area that uh, we've dealt with in the past. Uh, I, I did prepare a spreadsheet. I'm not sure if you've got it up there yet on the screen. Uh, the original, uh, both bids came back and each one did a little bit differently. And what they did was one of them included what it cost for them to come up per sample and also the other one uh, did it separately. So you have a courier price on one we're coming up here every day, and on the other bid, it's just included in the cost of the sample. So, ES Babcock, uh, hands down, was a little bid on this, and we'd like to enter into a contract for the next three years with that. Uh, we have to answer any questions after the public comment. Are there any emails or comments from the public? No emails. Anyone that wants to speak?
This public hearing is now open. I now call upon the general manager to confirm the posting and publication of the hearing notice. A notice of this public hearing was posted and published in the High Desert Star newspaper in the manner and form as required by law. The staff will now provide a presentation and uh, Jonathan Abadesco is uh, overseeing this. Uh, thank you, President Meeks. Dear members of the board, district staff and management, public members, good evening. The district prepared a draft initial study where the environmental impacts of phases two and three of our sewer uh, project was distributed for a 30-day uh, public notice. And with that said, the project description for the uh, mitigated negative declaration states that the district is proposing to construct approximately 64 miles of um, sewer pipeline, 1,300 manholes, and three um, lift stations over the course of the next 10 years. The notice was posted to the town's local newspaper, High Desert Star, on May 6th. For a wider public distribution, the district placed a postcard mailing in each of the customers' water bills during the month of May. The notice was posted on the County of San Bernardino's clerk's office and the state clearinghouse. The district, almost of today, received seven letters, emails, and voicemails. So I'll be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Uh, at this time, we will now turn to public testimony. This is the public hearing for the receipt of oral and written public testimony for and against the Phase Two and Phase Three sewer collection system project and mitigated negative declaration prepared under the California Environmental Quality Act. You are not required to provide oral testimony in order to submit a written comment. If you wish, you may simply submit your written comment to High Desert Water District personnel by way of email to C-O-V-I-M at H-D-W-D dot com. I'm going to say that again in case you missed it the first time. C O D I M at H D W D dot com. You will have five minutes to email in your comment with a time beginning right now. It is now 529 according to our clock right here. Or you may speak when prompted. Please identify yourself and your address. You will have the customary three minutes to speak. The board secretary will let you know when you have one minute remaining so that you can conclude your remarks. If you would like to speak on this, this is your opportunity to do so. Speakers, uh, please call or let uh, our secretary know. Uh, I'd like to speak. Can you hear me okay? Your name is, and you're from Yucca Valley? Uh, my name is Brad Napentech. I live in Yucca Valley on Desert Gold. Um, we are in, I believe, phase two. Um, I submitted written comments and they've been responded to. Um, I want to thank Ms. Gilbert. She reached out to me this afternoon uh, to go over some of my concerns. Um, but there were two items I wanted to bring up. The Yes, the notice in the paper meets CEQA requirements, but the notice in the bill arrived at this neighborhood after the comment period had closed. So I understand from Ms. Gilbert why it was done that way, but in going forward, I'd like to see that streamlined because getting that notice after the comment period closes may have discouraged some folks from uh, submitting public comment. Uh, the other item I had issue with was uh, construction noise. Um, I gather from Ms. Gilbert that that's largely a function of our town's development code, not having any kind of specificity. But uh, she did add a 
note to the MND that construction be, would be within business hours only. I would like to ask you that you define what business hours are um, because this is going to be largely in residential neighborhoods. So I'd like to see business hours defined as eight to five. Uh, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any others that would like to speak? Hearing none, we, uh, is, there, is there any other verbal comment that anyone would like to say? President May? Yes. Let me can tell us what Stukas hours were during the construction. They built packages, A, C, and D. So, you know what their normal work day was? So they follow the town standard, which is 7 to 5. So. 7 to 5 are the hours that Stukas work here on phase one. They try, they try to be done at 3.30, but uh, sometimes it ran into, depending on the day. So yeah, that's Monday through Friday? Yes, Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. The only, Friday time they, the only time they worked other hours, like nights or something, is they had to have to get permission from the town, and, the, and actually they went door to door knocking if they had to work at night, but that was very rare. Okay. If you have any questions about that, please ask our assistant general manager, Tony Culver. And he'll be glad to fill you in on any questions that you might have on that related to that. Seeing no other who wish to speak on this matter, I am prepared to close the eyewitness. Do we have any uh, written though? We received one email. All right. So far, we still have uh, another two minutes. So we'll wait two minutes. I'm revealing my emails now. I'm not receiving any as of yet. We also have Zoom chat available should somebody want to utilize that as a way of commenting.
to provide anyone who would like to submit any written or oral comments a final opportunity to do so. Once the public hearing is closed, we will be prohibited from accepting any further oral or written testimony. Are there any remaining written comments? Are there any remaining oral comments? Anyone? Seeing none? Seeing no one else is wishing to speak, I hereby declare the public hearing closed. We will now move on to the action and discussion items on our agenda. The first of those is to consider adoption of Resolution 20-12, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the High Desert Water District, making findings and adopting a mitigated negative declaration pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act and approving the Phase 2 and Phase 3 sewer collection system project. Does staff have any further comments or presentation that will be made at this time? Um, there's nothing at this point, but I would like to commend um, Ms. Judy Gilbert, who did a uh, fantastic job in compiling all this um, data and documents for CEQA um, environmental study. Thank you. We appreciate you as well. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Would you like me to address the comments? That sure. Go ahead. Okay. So um, regarding the notices, I really appreciate, you know, Brad and I had a really good conversation this afternoon, and Jonathan and I went back and forth on this. The phase two and phase three are thousands of customers, and um, the secret requires, uh, the minimum secret requirement for noticing is stakeholders and the newspaper notices. Um, I made Jonathan <laughs> give me a stakeholder list. We added the base, you know, we added the base and the airport, the golf course, and I mean, we really kind of put our heads together and came up with a good stakeholder list for the community of Yucca Valley, and they got an individual notice. We also noticed it in the High Desert Star, which nobody reads the legal ads. So um, we decided instead of trying to mail out thousands of notices, um, that we would place just as a as an extra level of notice and, and kind of as a public, uh, no, kind of public affairs, kind of a public, you know, outreach that you guys are doing this fantastic uh, job to, you know, preserve the groundwater by reducing the reliance on septic by doing this project. So, um, uh, and, and so that's kind of, it, it was kind of unfortunate the way the billing is in cycles. Um, <coughs> as we could really do about that. But because this was a 10-year project and like with, you know, like as Tony said, we did monitor the construction crews and they were very good about going door to door and communicating as those, with the customers as those phases uh, were going on. And so I know that that will be what is planned for the phase two and phase three. So we were, I was pretty comfortable with the way that we chose to try to notice this and, and get the word out at least that you were doing something in the community. Um, in terms of noise, um, the Town of Yucca Valley ordinance is a little vague and it really talks about, from an environmental perspective, talks about a, what creates a noise nuisance. So a noise nuisance is between the, is between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. So Again, with Sukut's crews, they were, you know, six o'clock, seven o'clock tailboard, and they're, you know, they're eight to three, eight to five. Um, so I did add, um, understanding um, Mr. Amplick's concern, and I did, and because the phase two and phase three are more in the residential areas and in more of the rural areas, I went ahead um, this afternoon and I added a mitigation measure to just say, you know, even though you guys require your contractors to follow all the ordinances, um, we went ahead and said that all project construction activities will occur during times identified as non-nuisance time frames <laughs> as identified by the Town of Yucca Valley Ordinance in effect at the, of the time of the project construction. That was the best way I could do it from an environmental perspective. Um, and I just said at the time of the initial study, the time defined by the ordinance uh, to not create a noise nuisance was defined as 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Crews are not going to work. Um, that's just the reality. So, I mean, I tried to match this as best I could with the city uh, ordinance and then also understanding, you know, what the construction folks do 
you do. So I did try to address that, and I appreciate the other last-minute email, Jonathan and I. You get kind of weary, uh, yeah. you know, reading all of this. So I also at the last minute changed the uh, wildfire, and I um, did did correct that typographical error. And so it now reads High Desert Water District. So <laughs> City of San Bernardino. I'm very sorry for that. Thank you. Um, so that that's been done. Um, the only other comment of note, really, that we did receive was from the Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, where they have just now proposed the Joshua tree as an endangered species, um, where in phase one, you just went to the county and could get a relocation, um, relocation to a relocation plan, we did a health assessment study. Um, and count of Yucca Valley, and, and so you had to get some permits to do something with them. Uh, we would, we're going to know, um, we're going to know probably, the, you know, by the end of this month or in the middle of next month, the listing status. So it's, we added a mitigation measure for you guys. So as the projects come on board, the you guys will need, we will need to check the status of the Joshua Tree. And if you do have any alignments that are proposed to uh, remove or uh, impact the Joshua Tree, that will have to be a separate conversation that you guys are going to have to consider if this, does, if this does get listed as a threatened species. You will have to have a take permit for that, and that will just add some time on to your, uh, your project. But the rest of the, the comments we received were um, Fairly standard, and, and all the mitigation there is in here. We, um, Jonathan also, uh, as required by Assembly Bill 32, um, did notify and, and talk to the tribes. Um, so we had out, we had tribal outreach on that, and so the uh, mitigation measures that are in here were developed with Assembly and Well, um, who was the most responsive tribe, um, and they were good. They were fine with everything. Um, so other than that, um, it's uh, pretty much like what you did with phase one, um, and just more in the rural areas. So um, I was really happy to be a part of this. It was great working with staff, and um, it's going to be a really exciting project knowing that you know what you're trying to accomplish is really great. Any other comments by staff? Seeing none. Um, thank you, thank you. Are there any comments from the board? Any comments? Seeing none? Well done. Okay. If there's no other board discussion, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution 20 12, a resolution of the board of directors of the High Desert Water District making findings and adopting a mitigated negative declaration pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act and approving the Phase 2 and Phase 3 sewer collection system project. Um, I'll make that motion. Make that motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Vice President Knapp and seconded by Director Sia. Roll call, please. President Hayes? Yes. Director Byron? Yes. Director Sands? Yes. Vice President Huff? Yes. Director Sia? Yes. Vice President Knapp? Yes. Let's go on to 4F, and this is the <coughs> resolution for 28-14. Uh, the 2020-2021 water budget, and uh, presenting this is Chief Financial Officer Jonathan Avedesco. Thank you again, Mr. President. So this uh, water budget was presented as a workshop uh, on June 10th to the full board. And we have noted some um, questions from our workshop and quick question. Cody, one of the things that I found, this is a change in the study, was that sitting there, there's no way you can really, it's difficult to see the board and what's going on. Uh, I was at a Zoom meeting, and it doesn't have to be this time, but I was at a Zoom meeting where the person was actually able to put the, these kinds of things right in one of the corners of the Zoom meeting so that the people, as, as I watched them, I could watch what was going on the board. So it's a little confusing when you're sitting out there and talking about the board and you can't, you just don't really have an idea of what's going on. So if we keep doing Zoom meetings, I'm going to ask if we can do that. And again, if you talk, it might be kind of a good idea to kind of go back and uh, go back and really kind of tell people what the word is. I know you did. Um, it's just a, an issue with um, being, being able to run it on both ends. So. I 
I was asked to do a consulting work with another agency to implement a new accounting software. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Director Byron and seconded by Vice President Powell. Roll call, please. presenting the uh, wastewater budget for the upcoming year. District, the district has budgeted operating revenues of $1.3 million, where um, single-family residents accounts for 65% of the entire revenue budget. The district has budgeted $1.8 million in operating expenses, where payroll and benefits on the next slide accounts for 64%. The district also budgeted $32,000 in in CIP for wastewater. I'll be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Are there any emails or public comment? conservative by uh, by trying to uh, make assumptions. So all the remaining property for stages one to four that have not connected yet, we expect them to connect by January of 2021. And for from stages five through eight, we noted that. Um, uh, we are anticipating that they will be connected on the very end of their connection range. So we did some assumptions, so hopefully um, they will be hooked up so that we can get the revenue. But in case um, they, they, they uh, did not connect, then we will address that on our media budget. Thank you. And then the deficit will be made up by the water fund in terms of a loan. Uh, yes, it will be a loan from the water fund. Thank you. Other questions for board members? Comments? Director Grant? So we 
don't have nearly as many contractors up here as we thought because their prices are too high. Okay. Thank you. And Ashton is doing a great job. Yeah, I, I hear from some of the residents uh, you know, that they've been really happy with them. So that's good. Any other comments? Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. And moved by Director Sam, seconded by Director Graham. Roll call, please. Yes. Director Brown? Yes. Vice President Huff? Yes. Director Byron? Yes. Director Sam? Yes. Let's go to 4H. And this is uh, resolution number 20-13, appropriation limit. And presenting this is Jonathan Abadesco, our Chief Financial Officer. Um, thank you again, President May. So this agenda item is a housekeeping item that we do every year, where the district is required annually by law to set an appropriation limit uh, to set the amount of property taxes that we can spend for the year. So the appropriation limit that we have calculated is $9.1 million. I'll be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Are there any emails or public comment? Can you speak up if you have a comment? No emails or received on the site. Thank you. Let's bring it back to the board. Any questions, comments on the site? Director Byron. I, I'm not familiar with this. So, so what you're saying is we have to declare a limit that we can't spend the property tax of 9.1 when we only get 1.6? Yes, um, this is only a housekeeping item that is being required by law for every um, district or governmental agency receiving property taxes. Okay. Okay. That would be our next and we don't receive $9 million in property yeah. tax revenue, so we can never hit that. So regularly, we just receive about um, less than um, yeah, two million dollars. We need to have a little faith because if Proposition 13 is voted down, we may have all the property taxes we could possibly want. <laughs> That'd be a nice problem to have. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? See now, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Been moved by Vice President Huff and seconded by Director Byron. Roll call, please. Director Sam? Yes. President Mays? Yes. Director Byron? Yes. Vice President Huff? Yes. Director Grant? Yes. Uh, let's go to 4I, and this is the resolution 20 16, change of use adjustments for properties identified within the assessment district to uh, 2014 1 boundary. Presenting this is Chief Financial Officer Jonathan Evadesco. Um, thank you again, President May. So since the since the assessment district for phase one was formed in 2015, there have been some changes in use in property classifications resulting to corrections and adjustments. Therefore, an adjustment to each levy is required to reflect the change of use or benefit. So currently, staff have identified 18 vacant properties that were converted to single-family homes. The total change of benefit or use amounted to $76,000. I'll be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Are there any emails or anyone that would like to speak in the public? Hearing no, I'll bring it back to the board. Is there any questions, comments by the board? I'll entertain a motion then. So moved. It's been moved by Director Byron and seconded by Director Graham. Roll call, please. Director Byron? Yes. Vice President Huff? Yes. Director Graham? Yes. President May? Yes. Director Stamp? Yes. Let's go on to 4J, and this is the California Special Districts Association. C 
and the Southern Network. And presenting this is Cody Vicks, our Board Secretary and Community Outreach Coordinator. Yes, thank you, Presentation Members of the Board, Staff, Public. The California Special Interest Association Board of Directors provided a valid and candidate statement for the candidates running for the Southern Network CC and included this information in the board packet for review. Um, the FDA requires that votes be passed electronically. Uh, staff has received the voting link and we are requesting that you make a consensus um, vote and authorize staff to move forward with. Um, Passing the vote via that. And following public comments, I'll be happy to um, answer any further questions. Anyone in the public have an email or would like to speak regarding this issue? We received no email. Okay, thank you. quite 
bit lower. In some positions we were at the average, and in other a few positions we were actually low. Wow. But as I was I was discussing with uh, Director Byron in the previous days, Aqua used to do an annual salary survey, which was the best because they gave you geographic locations and they also gave you size of district. So it's much easier to get data when Aqua does it because everyone was participating. So you can hand job rates were much uh, more alike. Nowadays, because of our location, we have to look at our nearby other water districts. And the only one really similar to our size is probably Mission Springs that does both water and wastewater. But then we have to look at Joshua Basin in 29 because they're up here in the county. So it's a little more difficult, I think, for the consultants. And it was much, I thought, probably much easier when I started here as a CFO to get the annual survey by Aqua. And Due to my fault, well, I put this behind. We were be a number of years behind getting a compensation study. So I know we did one for the first four years and another one, but this one's a long time. Rick Byron, I was just going to say that I think that when you expand the classification, and you expand the scales, it gives managing a lot more flexibility to work with the employees, and it also provides a lot more incentive. Or at least support it. Any other comments? Questions? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move the staff recommendation. Second. And moved by Director Stephen, seconded by Vice President Puff. Roll call, please. Director Brown? Director Graham. 
We've got some news this week about a longtime employee, Mojave Lance Eckler, is uh, resigned and he's moving on to be a general manager. Where is that? Clear and Gulf. Yeah, water district. So it's kind of it's it's good for him, but bad for us because he really helps us a lot here. So um, I just want to report that. Thank you, general manager. And music, you know, I'd like to commend Mike Taper. He's been working so hard on his sign. And even on his day off, he would he went and visited the vendor to get us to where we are tonight. So I really appreciate his efforts. And then I'd like to congratulate Sarah Susano. She's a new regional board member recently appointed to the Colorado region from uh, Coachella. And Director Byron, if you want to go have fun, don't ask me to go to the <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight.